Jesus, Son of God, only you can save me, suffering on the cross. You gave your all, willingly paid the cost for me. Now I am free to worship Jesus. You are my healer, oh Jesus. Touch me and I will be free. Lord, by your stripes I am healed. I am healed, oh Jesus. You are my Savior, oh Jesus. You are my strength and my shield. I put my trust in your name, in your name, Jesus. Lord, your name is great. A refuge I can run to, a shelter from the storm, a faithful friend, and I can depend on you, my God, my King. I lift my voice and worship Jesus. You are my healer, oh Jesus. Touch me and I will be free. Lord, by your stripes I am healed. I am healed, oh Jesus. You are my Savior, oh Jesus. You are my strength my shield I put my trust in your name in your name Jesus Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. Jesus, you are my healer. Oh, Jesus, touch me and I By your stripes I am healed, I am healed, oh Jesus, you are my Savior, oh Jesus, you are my strength and my shield, I put my trust in your name, in your name. My Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus, my Jesus. Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God.
even before Adam was created, the Bible says Jesus was the Lamb of God from the foundation of the world. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, has reconciled us to God. Because of the blood, our conscience has been cleansed from dead works. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ sets us free from that. For some of us, it could mean lifestyle patterns, sin problems, behavior things that was handed down from generation to generation and now it's part of us. When we testify with our mouth, what the blood of Jesus Christ has done for us, it puts us into a place of experiential victory. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. Uh, it's our joy and delight to come your way and bring God's Word to you. Uh, spend this time in the Word of God, pray with you, and release God's blessing and power on your life. We are doing a very important series on the power of the blood of Jesus. And uh, we are look, we've looked at some of the Old T Testament references to the blood and what, what was the meaning, the significance behind uh, each of those references. We've just kind of touched on them. We touched on them very briefly. And we want to delve further in the Word of God uh, and talk about the blood of the Lamb. What we see in the Old Testament is that several different offerings that God instructed His people to make involved them bringing a lamb without blemish. And I'll just make reference to a few. For instance, there was what was called a sin offering, uh, where they would bring a lamb uh, as a sin offering. The sin offering had to do with any unintentional sin, any unintentional violation of, of God's word, and God's instruction. Anything they wrong, they did, but it was not intentional. They did it unknowingly. It was, a, it was still sin. They had to bring a sin offering uh, to atone for that. And then there was what we were, another offering called the trespass or the guilt offering, where uh, there was a violation of the holy things of God. They did something wrong. They violated some, uh, uh, the, the, something that God said was hallowed, uh, and, uh, uh, and they were you know, aware of it. They, you could say they did it intentionally and knowingly. Uh, and now to atone for that, they had to bring a lamb as a trespass or a guilt offering. There was also... A burnt offering. Now, the burnt offering uh, was something they could do at any time, at their own discretion, uh, whenever they wanted to do, uh, offer something to God. Uh, the burnt offering signified that the person was recognizing uh, their, their sin, they were acknowledging their sin, but they were expressing their need for a relationship with God. So they brought a lamb that was burnt, it was completely burnt, and the smoke went up. As it were, God's saying that it would come up to them uh, as a sweet aroma, something that would please God. So the burnt offering was an expression of the person's uh, desire for relationship with God. And then there was also what was called as a peace offering. The peace offering was again something they did voluntarily anytime they wanted to do it. Uh, they again brought a lamb as a peace offering. But the peace offering was more uh, an expression of thanksgiving. Uh, they're, they're, they're expressing gratitude, maybe for God's provision in their lives, God's protection on their lives, um, God's goodness in some way that, is expressed, that, that they received. So they were bringing something just to you know, offer thanks. Their heart was at peace with God, so to speak, and so they brought this peace offering. So now all of these four offerings, they used a lamb, uh, and God said a lamb without blemish. That was the only requirement, meaning it, the lamb had to be healthy, it had to be clean, it had to be fit. And they brought a lamb without blemish as, as one of these offerings. Now, for those who could not afford a lamb, uh, they would bring a turtle dove and pigeon, as one or two uh, turtle doves and pigeons in, in, in the place of a lamb. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the Bible makes it so clear in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4 that the blood of these animals, of bulls and goats, were not going to wash sin away. So all of these offerings that God was telling his people to make were just pointers to something that was real, someone else. And so this, the lamb that was used in all of these offerings was, was pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why when you come into the New Testament, 
the introduction of Jesus Christ went like this. In John chapter 1 and verse 29, John the Baptist pointed to the Lord Jesus. And what did he say? He said, look, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole world. So here was the real Lamb, if you will. This was the Lamb of God, a Lamb given by God. The Old Testament, they brought lambs that they could afford, that they purchased, or they reared, and they brought a lamb, uh, uh, their lamb, in, 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 those, in those offerings. But here was the Lamb of God, a lamb provided by God. This lamb came from God. This lamb was the sin offering that God made available to you and me. Now, what the Bible says is this, and you find this in, Revel in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 to 20. You also find this in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8, that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God from before the foundation of the world. That means, even before God created the world, even before God uh, put everything in place, Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God. That means God knew in his foreknowledge, in the mind of God, Jesus, the Son of God, uh, part of the triune God, the Godhead, he was already determined to be this lamb, the lamb, the, be the sin offering, the lamb would become our sin offering or our trespass offering, if you will, who would die to make atonement for the sins of the whole world. This was determined even before Adam and Eve were created. This was determined even before the foundation, though, even before the world was created. Jesus was the Lamb of God. So what happened? Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, and we're not going to read the entire passage there, uh, chapter there, Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 12, is, is an amazing prophetic uh, explanation or exposition of Jesus being our sin offering. Isaiah says several things in that chapter in Isaiah 53, and I'll just reference some. Isaiah says, you know, all of us, like sheep, we have gone astray. But the Lord has laid upon him the sins of us all. So here Jesus is the sin offering. All our sins are put upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is offered, his life is offered, his blood is shed as an offering for the sins of the whole world. And so he is the perfect Lamb of God, the perfect sin offering made for the sins of the whole world. For every person who lived and whoever will live, Jesus Christ died and gave his life and shed his blood as the atonement for the sins of the whole world. So, Jesus, therefore, becomes that one complete offering. As Isaiah says in Isaiah 53 and verse 10, he says, when you make his soul as an offering for sin, and the pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand, the Lord will see it and he will be satisfied. That means God sees this offering that was made, Jesus, the Lamb of God, and he is satisfied. He says, now the price for the sins of the whole world has been paid to the offering of the life of Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God. And therefore, we do not, we no longer need those daily offerings that were made under the Old Covenant. You know, with the Old Covenant, they were, they, in Exodus 29, we saw that they had to do daily sacrifices, morning and evening. They would bring an offering, they would sacrifice, they would burn it up before God. There were daily sacrifices. And Hebrews, the seventh chapter, the 27th verse says that we do not need daily uh, these sacrifices for sins because he did once for all. He did this once for all when he offered up himself. So this Lamb of God was a perfect, complete sacrifice. So what happens to you and me now? Because Jesus offered his life as a sacrifice and his blood as a perfect Lamb of God was shed, what happens to you and me? There are many, many consequences or blessings that come to you and me because of the blood of Jesus Christ offered up for you and me as the Lamb of God. Our sins are forgiven. And I'll make references to some of these scriptures. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, 
the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood, we said earlier, has cleansing power. The blood in the Old Testament of those animals would, uh, could not take away the sins, but the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, the Bible says, cleanses us from all sin. The sacrifice He made removes our sins away. It washes all our sins away. And what we see is this. That just like what happened on the Day of Atonement when the high priest would go into the most holy place with the blood of the sin offering, and he would sprinkle it on, um, the, ark, on, on the mercy seat, which was, was uh, on top of the Ark of the Covenant. The mercy seat was basically uh, the covering, the gold covering of the Ark of the Covenant. He would offer the blood there. He would sprinkle the blood there, so, as, so to speak, as, uh, as offering the blood before God. And he would do that once a year in order to make atonement. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 to 14, that the Lord Jesus himself, not with the blood of goats and cows, verse 12, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, and he obtained eternal redemption for us. And verse 14 of Hebrews 9 says, How much more the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, would cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So what happened? Jesus, with his own blood, he entered the most holy place in the heavens, in the very presence of the Father, and he offered that up for us. And he had to do that only once. Unlike the priest in the Old Testament, where that was offered every year, every year the atonement had to be made. Jesus did it just once for all. And so what was the result? It says here in verse 14, that therefore we are set free, we are cleansed from dead works. That means I do not need to do works in order to receive forgiveness from God. I do not need to try to do good works so in, in an attempt to secure redemption, in an attempt to secure my atonement. I don't need to do that. We are set free from trying to make our own efforts to receive forgiveness for sins because Jesus took care of that and he had to do that just once, and he did it once for all. It's very interesting in, in, in the New Testament to fi find uh, what the Bible tells us about the blood of Christ. It tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 25, that he, sent, he set Jesus to be the propitiation by his blood. The word there, propitiation, Romans 3, 25, is actually, means, simply means an atoning sacrifice, the sacrifice that paid the price for the forgiveness of sins, the atoning sacrifice. But the word there also means mercy seat. Jesus himself became that mercy seat. His blood offered up, was put upon the mercy seat. He became our mercy seat. Therefore, we uh, have our, all our sins atoned for. The price for all our sins has been paid. And because of that, through his blood, the Bible says, we now have received reconciliation. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 9 says, we've been justified by His blood. And verse 10 says, when we were enemies with God, we were reconciled to God through His death. What the reconciled means, that we who are enemies with God, we can now become friends with God. God always loved us, but we were the ones who were at enmity with God. Our own wicked works, our own wrongdoings, our choosing to go our own way made us enemies with God. But through the blood, the Bible says, we can now be reconciled to God. We can be brought into friendship with God and be reconciled to Him. And consequently, because of the blood, the, the blood of the sin offering, the blood of Jesus as the Lamb of God, what happens to us? We become cleansed, we are consecrated, and we are justified in the eyes of God. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us. He washes all our sins away. The blood of Jesus Christ sanctifies us or consecrates us, makes us holy before God. And the blood of Jesus Christ justifies us. It makes us righteous in the sight of God because He is that perfect and complete sin offering. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10 that because of His blood, He has made a new and living way. He tore open the veil uh, which the high priest could go past only once a year. But now we opened up the way. So you and I have boldness 
to enter into the holiest through the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10, verse 19. That means you and I can enter into God's presence anytime, anywhere, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. So, if we try to summarize, uh, and I also want to mention this, in Hebrews 13, verses 11 to 15, the Bible says that through His blood, we can now offer sacrifices to God continuously. Our sacrifices in the New Testament are spiritual sacrifices, and we can offer that up continually, anytime, anywhere, the sacrifice of praise. We can offer it up to God because of the blood of Jesus. So, Jesus is the Lamb of God. His blood shed for us does the following for you and me. By the blood of the Lamb, we are cleansed. By the blood of this perfect Lamb of God, we are forgiven. By the blood of the perfect Lamb of God, we are reconciled. We are made friends with God. By His blood, we are released from dead works. That means us trying to do our own works in order to uh, receive forgiveness and experience uh, salvation. It's, it's, it's given to us freely now through the blood of Jesus Christ. By His blood, we are consecrated. We are made holy to God. By His blood, we are made righteous. We are justified. We are declared free from all sin, all guilt, all shame. And God says, you are accepted in my eyes. You are righteous. You are perfectly clean in my eyes. By His blood, we have access to the very presence of God. We can enter God's presence anytime, anywhere. And by His blood, we are able to offer up spiritual sacrifices. We are able to worship God freely. And our sacrifices are accepted before God. And what the Bible says in the closing book of Revelation, or in many, several, many places in the closing book of Revelation, we see Jesus as eternally the Lamb of God. He will be recognized forever and ever as the Lamb of God, the offering that God Himself provided, the sin offering that God Himself provided, who gave His life, who shed His blood, and who made all of these things possible for you and for me. So, on the program today, we've talked about Jesus being the, the Lamb of God, the sin offering that God Himself provided for you and me, and His blood makes all of these wonderful things possible. All we have to do is to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, to believe in Jesus, in what He did for us on the cross, and to receive that blood applied to our lives. And we say, Lord Jesus, wash me with Your blood. Cleanse me with your blood. I believe that your blood, which you shed on the cross when you were crucified, makes all of these things available to me. Your blood cleanses me. Because of your blood, I'm forgiven. Because of your blood, I'm, re I'm reconciled to God. Because of your blood, I have access to the very presence of God. Because of your blood, I, I'm, I'm cleansed from dead works, from doing works to uh, attain salvation. Because of your blood, I can offer sacrifices to God anytime, anywhere. Because of your blood, I have access to the very presence of God. You believe it, and you receive it. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, God, that the understanding of the truth, of this truth, will be made clear to each one of us. Jesus, the Lamb of God, and what His blood has made available to us. And I pray the power of the blood of Jesus over every person's life that they will receive it, they will experience it, that there will be cleansing from sin, there will be forgiveness, and there will be this complete awareness that they are cleansed, sanctified, and justified. And they have access in the very presence of God, that their sacrifices are acceptable to God. I pray this blessing on their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. APC's Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in God's Word as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders, and miracles.
It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's Word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders, and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that All People's Church is doing across India. We invite you to visit our church website apcwo.org where we have several free resources like mp3 sermons, sermon notes and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us.